The TGP Dragonflight Season 2 has concluded and Echo won the global finals with a phenomenal performance. My name is Nagura and I will be going over the highlights of their world record 31 freehold run. Right before the key starts, the players without stealth or invisibility use an invisibility potion to skip past the first few trash packs, so they can commit Bloodlust and all CDs for the double Iron Tide Enforcer pool. This pool is very dangerous on a high 45 key because of the Enforcer's Shattering Bellow cast, one-shotting players from 100% to zero if they don't use strong defensive CDs. After they're done with this pool, they backtrack and pick up another few trash packs to recover their offensive CDs and defensive CDs for the boss. They focus down the crack shot because it's a hunter-type mob that is very hard to move. Once it's dead and their CDs are back up, they drag the rest of the trash with them and engage the boss. Sky Captain Crack is the most volatile boss in this dungeon for this key level. The main problem is phase 1, which lasts until they push the boss to 75% HP. In this phase, the boss is mounted on his parrot Shark Bait and casts Pistol Shot on random players in a group. This ability does around 720k fire damage on this key level. It's not telegraphed and it can hit the same player multiple times in a row. Without multiple defensives, the players get one shot from 100 to 0. Additionally, players have to be healed back up to 100% immediately after a shot, otherwise they will die to a follow-up shot. Phase 2 is a lot easier for them, but they still have to make sure to not have multiple players get hit by Azerite Powder Shot, and Salia is baiting Shark Bait's Val Bombardment away from the group, while also avoiding the initial damage from the ability with Blessing of Freedom and Movement Speed abilities. After the boss's death, they skip the Iron Tide Enforcer at the start of the bridge with a pretty cool trick. Jinji mounts up on a three-seater mount, both Miris and Salia jump on the mount, and Clix is rescuing them onto the bridge past the Enforcer, while now is using Wild Charge and Stealth to skip the mob. Next, they gather up a lot of neutral mobs and the trash packs in the next boss area. They focus down the Build Shred Brine skill because it's a caster and they don't want to deal with it during the boss fight. Once it's dead, they drag the rest of the trash on top of Eudora and Raul. The start of this fight is pretty difficult for them because they still have trash mobs up, one of them being a trapper. So they have to deal with rat traps being thrown onto them periodically, while also worrying about Eudora's Powder Shot and Grape Shot. The rat traps can be cleared by now because Bearfor makes him immune to the root, but now has to prioritize the bosses and trash's positioning because he wants to move them into Caustic Freehold Brew, which is the green swirly applying a heavy dot to all enemies or players standing within it. Eudora's Powder Shot does physical damage and can be pretty dangerous for the cloth wearers in their comp, so they have to space out their defensive CDs really well or utilize the pillars in the room to line of sight their ability. Zelia is using his Blessing of Freedom to remove the Blackout Barrel from whomever it lands on. Once Eudora is dead, they are chaining more mobs into Raul, because the boss isn't as dangerous anymore and they want to utilize the Bruise to finish off more enemy forces. Lix is using Rescue to jump up the hill and pull a trash pack, while Jinji is moving to the back and adding another two trash packs on top of the boss. The boss dies after 5 minutes and 22 seconds, and they dealt with 27% enemy forces and the boss within that time. Now Jinji is moving towards the Ring of Booty to talk to the NPC to activate the RP. While Jinji is on his mission, Nao is preparing for one of the biggest trash pulls of their run. Nao is gathering 29 total mobs for this pool. The rest of the team jumps up on a building to avoid getting hit by the duelist charges and the oarsman sea spouts. This strategy was first used by Ana's Last Hope, the second place team, and then adopted by the other TGP teams. They commit their second bloodlust of the dungeon for this pool. It's very difficult for now to survive the insane amount of damage all of these mobs do to him, and the rest of the team has to worry about the plague step from the built red petfoots. They do heavy initial damage and leave a disease on the players, doing nature damage and reducing healing taken by 25%. Even though they have both Salia on the Paladin and Miras on the Priest that can dispel disease on a short CD, they also have to worry about dispelling the Afflicted Affix. This is why they are committing Dwarf Racials and heavy defensive CDs for this pool. Once they're done, they move to the Ring of Booty. They catch the pick and gather up three Crushers while waiting for Ludwig to spawn. They pull another trash pack into the boss, but still focus Ludwig to make sure Trothek spawns faster. There's a lot to dodge for the players here, as they have to avoid getting hit by the shells from Ludwig, the Crusher's Ground Shatter, 
and boulder throw while later also cutting the sharks on Trothak. They then finish off Trothak and are ready to move to the final boss area. Mirrors uses Mind Tooth on a couple of packs so they can walk up the bridge, while now stealths ahead to get into position to pull a trash pack onto the boss. They then use the three-seater mount and rescue tech again to skip the last trash packs. While now is pulling the last enemy forces they need, Jinji pulls the pack that is linked to the boss. Then now engages the boss and Jinji uses invisibility to reset the trash they don't want to fight. Phase 1 of Harlan Suite isn't as difficult as the later phases, so they can finish off the trash without having to worry too much. Once the boss enters phase 2 at 60%, they have finished off all of the mobs except the Oarsman that dies shortly after. Now they have to space out their defensive CDs properly to survive the Whirling Daggers and the Cannon Barrage being applied to the whole group. They also save their Bloodlust for their last set of 2 minute CDs to finish off the boss and time the 31 Freehold as the only team to do so in the Dragonflight Season 2 TGP Finals. Of course these strategies are incredibly risky and really well executed, so a huge shout out to Echo for pulling off the victory this weekend, amazing job. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown of this run, and if you did, remember to subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and we'll see you in Azeroth.